As a business owner and online entrepreneur, your job is to convert people from casual website visitors into tangible customers for your business. Now, regardless of whether you offer some sort of service or if you're promoting a product online, you need to make sure that you do enough on your product pages, in your ads and so on and so forth to convince people that your product or service is right for them. And in this video, I'm sharing five language techniques that you can utilize to help you to actually improve the way in which your website and web pages convert for you. The first language technique that I wanted to speak about is curiosity. Now, curiosity can be used in a number of different ways to help you to drive increased sales to your website. So the first way is if you're doing email marketing, both to your own email list, but also if you're paying to advertise through someone else's email list as well, doing something like solo ads. Now I have solo ads uh, videos on this channel as well. So I'll leave some of those in the description description down below just in case you're not too sure what solo ads are. I also reference email marketing in the formula as well so if you haven't read that yet make sure you go and download your free copy. Links will be in the description. However email is a great place for you to use curiosity. So think about it this way. If you're building up your email list and you've got subscribers on there there's so many emails that they are probably bombarded with on a daily basis but what actually makes your email stand out from the hundreds of emails that people are receiving? You want to put something in there that makes them curious, that make that sparks their interest and like, who, what's that? You know, let me click on that. Let me see what that is all about. So if you can use some sort of curiosity, um, then that can increase your open rate within your emails or your solo ad marketing. Curiosity can also be great for what's also known as interruption marketing. So for example, you have like ads on Facebook or on Instagram or on LinkedIn. Now people are not actually going to these platforms probably to look for the product or the service that you are selling. So when you when you are advertising on these platforms, essentially you're interrupting what someone initially came to that platform to do to now try and sell them on your offer. So that can be a harder sell, for example, um, than if you're doing something like Google pay-per-click marketing. If someone is looking for football trainers and they type in football trainers and your ad for football trainers comes up, then that's more of an organic way of showing your ad because they're actually in the ready to buy mindset. They're looking for that particular thing. But if someone's not looking for football trainers and they're just replying to messages on their their Instagram and then your advert shows up, then your advert actually needs to capture their attention. And if you use curiosity, something that will make them think, hmm, I wonder what that is all about, or I wanna know more, then that can actually encourage them to click and find out more on your website. Now, my second language technique, also known as a sales copy technique that you have heard probably a lot of times, especially if you've been subscribed to this channel, you would have heard me speak about it a lot, and that is having strong call to actions. Now, a call to action is when you spell out to someone what it is exactly that they should be doing when they reach your web page. It could be something as bold as buy now or click here or order today, but you wanna make sure that you make it extremely clear what you want people to do when they come to specific pages on your site. Now, I see this all of the time. People have some great sales copy. Uh, they have a great product at a great price and everything looks amazing but you're not clear, you don't spell out to people exactly what you want them to do. If it's an opt-in page and you're trying to just get email subscribers, tell people, hey, leave your name and email address below and make sure you click the submit button. So you want to spell it out to people, make sure people know exactly what they should do when they come to your website and make sure you're using really strong call to actions on the pages that you need someone to convert on. Another throwaway tip is where possible, if you can actually make your call to action button vibrant and maybe even a different color to the rest of your page, then this can help it to really stand out so people can see it, it captures their attention and and they're more inclined to make that buying decision. You see this on platforms such as eBay and Amazon. They have big call to action buttons that stand out from the rest of the page and they say something that is really captivating like add to cart or buy now and it tells people exactly 
what they should do. Now, if you can also use results-based language within your sales copy as well, this can actually help to encourage people to make a buying decision. So by results-based, I mean what results are people likely to get when they purchase your product or your service? Now, this might not be applicable to every product or to every service, but what is the thing that this person is going to be able to achieve? Can you paint the picture for them? I remember one time I was at a business event and one of the event managers actually got on stage and he was trying to sell another event and he told us all to close our eyes and he said, look, imagine you built the business that you were dreaming of. Imagine you were in the place that you wanted to be. Now, what that guy actually did was he put it in our minds, the result that we wanted to achieve. And once we had that result in our minds, once that was in our psyche, then we were more inclined to actually be like, yeah, I actually want to buy from this guy because he can actually make me imagine where it is I want to be. And if you have a product that allows people to go from one result to another result, you want to make sure that you are putting that result in their minds within your sales copy. So your products pages, maybe even your homepage, maybe even in your ads, you want to paint the picture of where they are now, but also where that person is going to be as a direct result of using your products or ordering your service. And if you can give a time scale, then that will be great as well. For example, if you are a fitness trainer and you help people to lose a certain amount of weight in a certain amount of time, then make sure you stipulate that. Now, obviously you want to make sure that your results are realistic. You don't want to try and sell a dream that people cannot actually achieve. But if you know that you can get certain results for people, make that clear within your sales copy. Now, next I want to talk about benefits versus features. So a feature of a product or a service might be something more technical. So for example, if you were selling a sofa, a feature would be, for example, like the material it's made out of, maybe where it's come from, what country, uh, how it was built and all of that stuff, which is great for the people who care about that, but most people care more about the benefits. So if it's made out of leather, what are the benefits of that? Is it more comfortable? Does it uh, stain less? If it's a particular dimension, how many people can that so far now fit on it? So don't just speak about the features of the product or the service that you have, but speak about how those features benefit the person who is likely to buy from you. So what this does, again, is it paints the picture of what that so far is able to achieve, what your product or what your service is actually able to achieve for the person reading the copy on your website. Now, a lot of people forget about this. They just put the specifications of the product and people reading it might not necessarily be that techie. So they might not know necessarily what that particular feature um, is going to do to benefit them. So you want to put the features as well as the benefits because it's the benefits that's actually going to help you to sell your products or your service. Now, moving on to my final but favorite sales copy technique. And this is the ability to counteract some of the objections that your potential customer might have when they come across your website. So for example, your product or your service might be a little bit pricey. So you might want to actually address this on your website, give people a reason why your price is what it is, maybe even compare that to other products or other services, maybe say, hey, look, you can spend £100 less on some other website, but then you won't get this, this and that, or then the product won't last for long and you end up spending more having to buy it again, or you know, outline the reason why your product is superior to other people and you know address the cons of your product address some of the issues that your potential customers might have with your product and counteract that and that can actually help you to actually convince someone who is maybe on the edge of making a buying decision on your website and they might say hey look these are some of the objections that i have but this company was able to actually counteract those objections within their sales page. Now, I'm not saying that you need to use every single one of these techniques on every single product page on your website, but you want to make sure you use them when needed because you can definitely try and oversell a product that doesn't need that much of a description. Um, but I think where the real market
marketing comes in is knowing where to use what. Now, I will kind of be doing more videos um, about how you can utilize these techniques in the right context and in the right places. But if you're noticing that your sales pages are not currently converting in the way that you want them to convert, sometimes it's not necessarily the traffic source. Sometimes it's not even the product, but sometimes it's the way you are positioning that product on your website or maybe even other platforms. Some of you reach out to me and you're selling on eBay or on Amazon or on Etsy and your products are not selling. Well, maybe try and use some of these description techniques and you could potentially increase your overall sales without having to drive more traffic to your website. Now, I speak about these kinds of things in my formula, which is completely free. It's the formula to generating leads and sales online, and I call it traffic plus conversions equals sales. Now, this particular video, we're focusing on conversions because you could drive the same amount of traffic, but alter something about your page or your product or your pricing or your sales copy like we were speaking about in this video. And that can actually increase the way in which your website converts website visitors into customers and sales for your business. Or you can go about changing your traffic. Maybe the traffic that you're sending to your website is not targeted enough. Maybe the platforms that you're using are not high authoritative enough and you change the traffic source and that can also help you to increase your conversions. Um, so make sure you go and grab yourself a free copy of the formula. I'll leave a link somewhere on this screen, but also in the description down below. It's completely free. So make sure you go and download that. But I really do hope that this video helped you out. And if it did, then please click the like button down below and make sure you share this video with a friend. If you have any additional questions or comments, then leave them for me in the comment section. But until next time, watch some of my other great videos. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more awesome business related content. Have a great day. Make sure you download the formula and I will see you soon.